Walk with me. I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is Yahuwah, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. And I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of the great goodness. And shall sing of thy righteousness. The I am is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great mercy. The I am is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Yahuwah, and thy saints shall bless thee, and they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and the talk of thy power. To make known to the sons of men of his mighty acts and glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The I am upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hands, and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. The I am is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. Yes, the I am is near unto all them that call upon him, and all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. And the I am preserve all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the I am, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever. And ever. Psalms chapter 135 or 145. Yes, deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have swelled the thoughts of the hearts of men. And let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me in my seed that we go not astray henceforth and evermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, those of you on this TikTok channel. We Praise his mighty name for you. Yes, we do. Yes, we're in the book of Joshua. Not Joshua, Judges. I see this in the, the list. I'm reading above Judges. We are in Judges. Yes, Judges. I'm old. I, I give up. I'm old. All right. Now, Judges. In the book of Judges, yes, chapter, we are in chapter 13. Uh, I believe we're in chapter 13 or chapter 12. I'm sorry, chapter 12. <sighs> it's been a long day yesterday. But either way, we're in chapter 12. And right now we're, 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 we was reading how God gave Jephthah the victories and how that his daughter was, he made a vow unto the Most High to sacrifice. He was thinking that it was, he was thinking that in verse 11, he was chapter 11, he was thinking that it was uh, it would be an animal that passed by his door. Maybe he was used to animals passed by his door, deer or whatever. And that animal he would sacrifice to the Most High. But it wound up being his daughter for some reason. And for some reason he had to sacrifice his daughter. Or whatever he did, I don't know. For this is a questionable portion of Scripture. You know, why would he sacrifice anything at that point being human? Now, but nevertheless, this is what you call a Pentioch or Septuagint or whatever. It's, it's a Greek translation into the Latin, into whatever language it is translated into. And that's what we're fighting with. Now, in verse 1, Judges chapter 12 and verse 1. 
And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward. And said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon? And didst thou not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. In other words, why are they, why are they doing this? In other words, you see, this can be nothing but spirits of darkness, spirits of confusion. Why couldn't we get the glory? Why couldn't we get the glory with you? The children of Israel wouldn't be. In other words, it was God that done the deliverance. It was God that gave Jephthah the victory over the children of Ammon. And now here they come with their demon-encouraged self saying, Why? And then they're mad. War among us. We will burn thy house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people are a great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the I am delivered them into my hands. Wherefore then are ye, are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me? And Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim. Because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives, and Ephraim among the Ephraimites, and among the Masonites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped, let me go over. That the men of Gilead said unto him, Thou art an Ephraimite. If he said, Nay, and they said unto him, Now, say now, Shiboleth, Shib, Shiboleth, Shiboleth, and he said Shiboleth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him. Now, they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan, and there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousands because of what they did. And Jephthah judged Israel six years, and then died Jephthah the Gileadite, and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him, Abazan. These, these are saying, now, God, this is how Jephthah died, and after him, there was, he judged him six years, and then he died, and then God sent another judge, and after him was Abzan, Abzan of Bethlehem, yes, Bethlehem, judge Israel. And he had 30 sons and 30 daughters, whom he sent abroad and took in 30 daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. And then Abzan was buried in Beth, at Bethlehem. And after that, Elon, the, Zebulak, the Zebulonite judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. And Elon the Zebunite died and was buried in Algelon, or Ajelon, or Elon, a country of Zebulon. Now, Jay wasn't there at that time. And after him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Parathonite, judged Israel. Many times these people, they judge Israel, they deliver Israel from their enemies. And in verse 14 it says, He had forty sons and thirty nephews that rolled three score and ten ass coats, and he judged Israel eight years. In other words, God delivered him. And Abaddon, his son of Helad, the Parathonite, died and was buried in Parathon in the land of Ephraim in the mount of the Amalekites. Now, you can see how the Israel, they act like wandering children that did not know their God. So you can imagine why the prophet came and says, the ass know his owner, and you know, so on and so forth. But my children, they do not know me. These things, they discuss the Most High. Not discouraged, but disgust them, because he created them for a certain purpose. He created you and me for a certain purpose. That's to praise and adore him. He wanted something that, not just obedience of your from your heart, not just because he commanded you, but from your heart because he commanded you, because you love him, really. Now, 
we're going to go to Judges chapter 13. Now in Judges chapter 13, verse 1. Judges chapter 13 and verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the I am. And the I am delivered them into the hands of the Philistine forty years. This is a long time. I mean, it would seem like eternity for those who were in that time. Just like those of you now that says, when is God coming? Why are we suffering under the hands of the colonizer and all these other people? And there is no God present. Number one, you need to study God and try to understand God rather than judge God because of your situation. Number two, you need to begin to, after you understand and know God, to obey God and follow his way. And he will direct your path, whether you have to go and subdue your enemies or political or what judicial means or whatever have you, God will deliver now, nobody said you had to go perfect, but your heart has to change. God had to see a change of heart. But God knew the heart of these children, the children of Israel would, they would be sincere at one time, but then their heart would change. He knew them. He knew them from their character. He knew them from the way they are. He knows you. If you repent and you turn from your evil ways for a year or two, yes, that's, that's outstanding. If you die in your you died in that time, yes, God will redeem you because your heart is straight. But then you begin, the flesh begin to take over in your eyesight and your ears and your five senses. And then you begin to go into the things that are tangible rather than those things that are not seen, which makes the things that are seen. If I said that correctly, yes. Okay, now, in verse 2, and there was a certain man of Nora, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. Now this is very significant here. This also was also featured in my, uh, uh, should I say, the Biblical Marriage Wednesdays. Yes, it was also about the man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. Now he's talking about the man, and his wife was barren, and bare not. This was by reason, because it was the purpose of the Most High. And the angel of the I Am appeared, unto the woman and said unto her behold now art th thou art barren and bearest not but thou shalt conceive and bear a son can you imagine maybe they did this to Mary they, but they said that the, the angel was Gabriel they, they, this, oh let's just mix this up the pizos or whatever you want to call it yes 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 that's just an hypothesis thou art barren but she was betrothed, so why would an angel come to her and say, she, he can say you will have a child. Yes, and that child will be anointed, as he had done in the past. But this certain thing that this perversion where the spirit overshadowed so-called Mary. This brings and it, it raises questions. When you told the watchers not to lay with, you gave them a commandment not to lay with the children of men, but only teach them and watch them. But the fact is, they laid with him, and it was an abomination unto the Most High. Now, why would the Most High turn around and allow a spirit, or himself as a spirit, to overshadow Mary? And she become pregnant. Apparently, these so-called beings have create, creative, they, they have been delegated some type of creative powers. Who knows? We don't know. But they just wanted to know and see what it was to be human. But either way. This angel who was unnamed, he, he, was, he was given a thing to say, and he did it right. He says, now you're going to, you can behold, you barren, but behold, and bear us not, but you shall conceive. In other words, your, your husband going to lay down with you, and y'all going to have a good time, and you're going to bear a son. <laughs> to put it that way. Now, therefore, beware, I pray you, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing, unclean chickens. See, when God, I understand what the brother was saying. When God says unclean, he means unclean. We have to understand, when we eat things, chickens eat dead stuff. Chicken will eat anything. Chicken is a scavenger next to the vulture. Now, some would say a turkey was a scavenger, but a turkey, by definition, does not eat those things. They don't even eat nothing dead. But chickens do. But yet it's wise, just like pigs. You, want, you, you, you wonder why turkeys only come out during the time of when they, they murdered the, the, I think it was Iroquois up, up there up north, the Indians up north, the black 
the black Indians, not the uh, brown skin Indians. So you had two, you had two, you had two nations of Indians in the land. The black came first, and then afterward came all the other ones. So you had the, uh, should I say, the ones from the Mongolian, Mongolia. You had some Indians from India that came to America. But yet, yet it, it's confusing because it's that way by design. Yes, they came from those places. You got to realize the land was not always divided. The land, we're talking about the Great Divide. And they try to confuse you on that too. You just look at the shapes of the continents and you will find out. They were all one land at once. Why do they fit so evenly together if they were separately created? So the fact is, she conceived and bear said, Now therefore, beware I pray thee. He said, Don't drink. Don't, don't, don't do anything unclean. Don't eat it. As God hath commanded you. Now you know if they're scavengers, don't eat them. If they're scavengers, don't eat them. You said grasshopper looks nasty. That's because you're not used to it. If you're a child, you go, you go to some countries, grasshoppers is nothing to eat. Yes, or locusts or whatever you want to call it after their families. That, no, that's not unclean. They don't eat dead stuff. Now, if they get, if they starve, now crickets would eat each other. Yes, crickets will eat each other. But I've never seen grasshoppers eat each other. Maybe they do, but I doubt it. Now, he says now in verse 5, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto the unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Now, therefore, what is God is saying? If you're going to do the vow of a Nazarite, wouldn't this be the prescription for a Nazarite? If you don't want to cut your head, you're going to grow dreads and all this stuff, and you're going to become a Nazarite, and you're supposed to dedicate yourself, and here you is smoking weed and doing everything else? Wouldn't that be against what, and you eating chickens? And every other scavenger beast. This is not God's way. No, it's not God's way. That's your way. That's what you concocted. And this is right here, just right before your eyes. It just says it and prescribes it verbatim. The vow of the Nazarite. And that is the vow that he had. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee. In verse 6, he says, the woman came and told her husband. Now, this was, this is, this is what I call a beautiful spirit of a woman. She always includes her husband in everything, not go behind his back and do things with the kids and don't tell her husband or to allow the kids to do something and then say it is all right. This kid doesn't know anything. All he knows, he wants to have his way or she wants to have her way. And whoever gives them that way, that is who they go with. <clears throat> this is mostly why most kids go with their mothers because they do have their way with their mothers regardless. If the father was mostly in their lives, then they... Then they didn't like the way their mother was treating them or, or wouldn't go with along with them, they would most definitely leave home or, or run away or tell the judge, I want to be with my father. But the father ain't going to go with a lot of mess children pop up with and teenagers. No, they're not going to do that. That's not a man's way. He's not, he's not a nurturer to that extent. And the woman has to be careful of her own instincts nurturing instincts because as a child grows older it could be detrimental to a child in its development as far as into a, a citizen and a strong individual it says now then the woman came and told her husband and said a man of God came unto me now she's telling him and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God very great in other words he, he, he had some anointing about him but I asked him not whence he was. Neither I told he neither told me his name. Why? Some of y'all, oh, that was Gabriel. That was Michael. Whatever, man, please. There are many angels. There are 24 that sit around God's throne 24-7 praising him. And every now and then he would give them some type of agenda or mission to do. These are spirits. These spirits become angels in that angels are messengers. There are angels everywhere. It's, I'm an angel just telling you this message. Not that it's a message, but it's a message. 
an angel. Yes. Think about the words that are being spoken in your head. Now he says, he says now, he asked, I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. In other words, don't make no mistake doing this stuff. And Manoah entreated the I am and said, Oh, my God, or my, my, my God, my high one, my creator, let the man of God which thou didst sin come unto us. In other words, right here, Manoah called his name, but this is what the translator wrote. My this, whatever. We don't even know who he's talking about when he says, when they say Lord, who are they talking to? People are so sneaky and these demons are too. Let the man of God which thou didst sin come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child. That shall be born. Because the man could. If she wouldn't have told her husband. The, the husband could have gave him anything. Wine or whatever. And then Manoah entreated the I am. And said oh. I am. Let the man of God. Which came. The man of God. Is a spirit. He didn't say the angel. He said the man. Thou didst come again unto us. And teach us. What we shall do unto the child. That shall be born. And God hearkened unto the voice of Manoah and the angel of God and came again unto the woman and she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, behold, the man hath appeared unto me and came unto me the other day. And Manoah rose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that speaketh unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? Okay, and the angel of the I am said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. And all that I command thee, let her observe. Now, this is the same thing. The woman had respect even in the absence of her own husband. This is the way, we, this is the way you ought to be, woman. You have to have respect when a stranger speaks unto you. Respect unto your own husband. In other words, to respect not to flirt. Respect to just get to the situation at hand. Because most of us men, we are out for one thing. And we want to purge and we're hunters. Regardless of how righteous they might seem, keep the business and leave the rest alone. The others belong to your husband. The smiles, the giggles. <laughs> no, no, no. God don't deal with that. And because a man might shun you, it doesn't mean that he mean. This man might be on his way to wanting to do the best for the most high. He's not going to take no flirty married woman or no flirty woman and he's married. He's not going to go that route. Even if he's just on a mission for God, he's not going to go that route. Even though he might look at you as, you know, uh, very attractive or whatever, it doesn't matter. He's going to ignore those things. Who is blind to my servant, seeing yet doesn't see? Didn't God say that? Hmm? He sees the things in his world, but he ignores them because the fact is his focus is on the most high. Yes. And the angel of the I am said to Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything. Now, he, he was respectful in the fact that he told the husband what he said. It cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. Who knows? Manoah could have had some type of ED or something like that. You know, God is something. When he has a purpose... <laughs> just like with Abraham and, and and Jacob and other people, he just he brings it all, whether the woman is deficient or the man is deficient. God is going to pump those things up, and he will pump it up. Better enjoy it while you can, I put it that way. But either way, and Manoah said unto the angel of the I am, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid 
That's a goat, a child goat. Tender meat, very delicious. Yes, yes, yes. And the angel of the I am said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou will offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the I am. You, this is the second time that we read in this type book of Georges where the angel is putting, exalting the most high. He's not taking an offering for himself like you, some of you pastors and preachers and imams and all these other people. He's not taking that. But he said to the most high, I don't want your money. I serve a God who is powerful. He created me. Yes. That's what it is. And Manoah said unto the angel, What is thy name? <laughs> he said, Let me say this again. And Manoah said, I pray thee. And the angel of the Lord said, Or should I say, The I am said, Thou Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. That's what he said. I have to read the rest of it. He says, Now a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the I am. For Manoah knew not that he was a messenger or angel of the I am. He gave a message from the Most High. Yes. And Manoah said unto the angel of the I am, What is thy name? We always want to know. Some of y'all want to know the name of devils. What's your name? What's your name? Come out of your Man, just speak the word. Get on about your business. If it still stay there while you walk off, it's going to leave. Your faith is, your confidence in the Most High is what's doing it, not you. And when thy sayings come to pass, we may do the honor. And the angel of the I am said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? It's none of your business. <laughs> really, secret means none of your business. So Manoah took the kid with the meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the I am. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass that when the flame went up toward the heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the I am ascended into the flame of the altar, and Manoah and his wife looked on it, and fell on their faces to the ground. You see that? His angel, or his messenger, was a flame of fire. This is where the, the writer of Hebrews could have gotten this from. In the other passage, where the flame shot up out the rock. And he says, now, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, the angel of the I am, or Yahuwah, Yahweh, Sanini, Nanini, Tata, and Zamini, ascended into the flame of the altar. Ooh, that is so powerful. That is powerful. That was that's powerful. I mean, when you start to really realize that if you to see such a sight into the flame of the altar and went up with the flame. Some of you just see this is why God had to tell Israel to stop gazing. Just want to gaze. Ain't got no faith. Ain't got nothing. Just want to look and take your cameras. Let me let me get this so I can show everybody. Give me some likes. Yeah, who cares about a like? This is God. Now, it's the way of God, the spirit of God, is to see the other, other side. And Manoah and his wife looked on and it fell on their faces to the ground. Oh, God is so awesome, so awesome, so awesome. Awesome. Great is the I am, greatly to be praised. Yes, awesome in his power and his might, in his creation, even you, as he created Beyond what any human being or these devils have infiltrated the minds of men to do. To make their robots look human and all. What are you doing? You're trying to give a man a mannequin so he can have some uh, relations with it? Or a woman? To try to stop and bring down the human existence? What are you doing? What is your intention? And these things God allows so he can see. You ain't going to do nothing but just add up to the wrath that is about to come. That's all you're doing. But the angel of the, of the I am, in verse 21, did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. That's all he had to do. He did what God told him to do. And then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the I am, or a messenger from the Most High. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. See, they have not, no man have seen God. They did not see God. 
Even Moses did not see God. Moses was in the very presence of the Most High. He saw his back part, so it says. But that was it. That's all. No more. But his wife said unto him, If the I am were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. <laughs> that was common sense. <laughs> we give that to you, woman. Yes. That was common sense. The man wasn't thinking with common sense, but the woman did. <laughs> Neither would we have showed, he would show of all these things, nor would as at this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. Oh, we're getting close to that king. They were really rejecting the Most High. And the child grew and the I Am blessed him. And the spirit of the I Am began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Estol. Estol. And with that, I don't need to say no more. All I can say is just peace. Walk with me.